The current version of Entity Framework is a mature product that has benefited from Microsoft's substantial commitment to it. As its core data access technology, Entity Framework is receiving virtually all of the company's data access innovations, even as the older generic ADO.NET data objects lag behind. You can certainly still use those older objects, but don't expect them to evolve as they have in the past. They'll get bug fixes and security updates, but probably very little else. A cynic might wonder why Microsoft needs yet another data access technology, another in a long line with acronyms like ODBC, DAO, RDO, ADO, ADO.NET, and now Entity Framework. The major problem with the older technologies is that Microsoft did pretty much all they could with those generic data objects and their standard typeless methods to access data. Modern enterprise applications require that developers focus on the application's domain model and, to make them more productive, let the plumbing take care of the repetitive, dare I say boring, data access code that communicates with the database. Any framework is designed to provide an application with entity data objects that are an inherent part of object-oriented .NET applications, freeing developers from writing SQL queries and yet another module that connects to a database. Now before I go any further, I want to make a note about Link to SQL. Microsoft does have another product called Link to SQL, which seems to be similar to Entity Framework. Both products let you use Link, Language Integrated Queries, to query a database using a data model. Each has unique features, but there is a lot of overlap. The reason why there are two similar yet very different products is that Link to SQL grew out of the group developing Link which is part of the programming language development that was looking to integrate data querying syntax into c -sharp and Visual Basic. Entity Framework, on the other hand, grew out of the data programmability team that developed the Entity SQL language. The two products developed independently and in isolation until they were far enough along to share with other groups. It soon became clear that Microsoft had two great but very different model-based data access technologies, each of which were designed for different kinds of scenarios. Ultimately, Link to SQL moved to the data programmability team, and they decided to focus continuing development on Entity Framework. But as a released product, Link to SQL will continue to receive support from Microsoft, although it'll no longer get any innovations and will largely be stagnant. This means that there's no need to rip Link to SQL out of your existing applications if you've used it, but you should use Entity Framework in new projects and when you make major upgrades to applications that use Link to SQL. All right, now back to Entity Framework. At this point in its development, Entity Framework has had a fair number of major releases as well as various point releases. Last time I counted, there have been about 12 major and minor releases. And this table lists the major versions of Entity Framework and their compatibility with different versions of Visual Studio and the .NET Framework. You need to use a version of Entity Framework compatible with specific versions of the .NET Framework because Entity Framework relies on .NET for many of its features. So the APIs have to be compatible. And Entity Framework provides tooling for specific versions of Visual Studio, but not older ones. You can often use a version of Entity Framework with an out-of-range version of Visual Studio, but you won't have the benefit of all of the development tools. You'll be doing a lot more of the work by hand, so generally you want to avoid doing that. One thing to be careful of is that if a version of Entity Framework supports multiple versions of .NET, sometimes not all features are available when targeting the earlier version of .NET. For example, to use the support for things like enums, spatial data types, table-valued functions, and performance improvements that were introduced in Entity Framework 5, you'd have to be using .NET 4.5, even though, if you see in the table, Entity Framework 5 can run with 4.0. You just won't get all the features. Here's the version history page from the MSDN site for Entity Framework. Now normally they keep this pretty up to date, but even this is a bit out of date because just a few days ago Entity Framework 6.1.1 was released. But 
For the most part, this has all of the features of each release. So they're listed reverse going back in time. So there's the almost latest release. And as you can see, that was a fairly substantial upgrade. And then there was 6.02, 6.01, going back to the original release of Entity 6. And scrolling down, and it lists all of the major features of each release. As you can see, some of them are fairly small, uh, patches and bugs and so forth. And scroll down, and you can see that the original version was just Entity Framework or Entity Framework 3.5. So that's a real handy resource for seeing where exactly the product is, at least the released versions. Now don't puzzle too much over the version numbering. As with many of its development tools and APIs, Microsoft sometimes syncs version numbers with that of Visual Studio or the .NET Framework, but then later drops the connection. So again, the first version of Entity Framework, version 3.5, was released in .NET 3.5, so they just use the same version number. Version 4 was in sync with .NET 4, but then Entity Framework version 5 was in sync with .NET 4.5. And since then, Entity Framework has been pretty much on its own version numbering track. So don't stress about the, the version numbers, but the one consistent thing is that over time, they do increase as opposed to jumping around. So hopefully the Microsoft will keep with that. The initial versions of Entity Framework were proprietary software that Microsoft included as integral parts of the .NET Framework in the System.Data namespace. Over time, though, it became clear that tying releases of Entity Framework to releases of Visual Studio in the .NET Framework meant a slower pace of development than was necessary to innovate to really make Entity Framework a viable option over time. So although Entity Framework is tied to specific versions of Visual Studio in the .NET Framework, meaning that you have to use a specific version of Entity Framework with particular versions of Visual Studio in the .NET Framework, it's now updated out of band, Entity Framework that is, meaning independently of those other products. It also became clear over time that Entity Framework was a product ripe for release as open source to make it a true community product and it became one of Microsoft's earliest open source products. This has the enormous benefit of having the source code available at CodePlex at entityframework.codeplex.com, which means that you can use the code as reference and even contribute to its development if you want to. This has had the somewhat surprising effect of seeming to increase the pace of development and releases. Over the last several years, Microsoft has moved to its NuGet package deployment technology to let you easily install new and updated technologies to projects within Visual Studio. For the last several versions of Entity Framework, this has been the only way to get the new version through NuGet. Now, Visual Studio 2013 shipped with Entity Framework 6.0 right in the box. But even as I speak, there have already been a few new releases. So you'll always want to grab the latest version of Entity Framework when you start a new project. You have the option of, by default, getting the latest released version, the stable version. But if you want to get the latest pre-released version, something that's not quite ready for wide use but has all the latest features in it, you can add the dash pre switch to the NuGet command. Or you can also go to the CodePlex site and download the nightly builds. In this exercise, I'm going to use Visual Studio to create a new console application project and show you how easy it is to use NuGet to download and install the latest version of Entity Framework. So I'll go over here to File, New Project, and I'll create a C Sharp project. So I'll expand that and go to Windows Desktop and select the console application. And this is just a throwaway project, so I'm not going to, I don't really care where I put it but I'm going to give it the name of install EF. And I'll click OK, and that creates the project. And opens up the program.cs file. I'll go ahead and hide that right there. And then I'm going to go over here to Solution Explorer. And I'll expand the references here. 
And notice that there's no reference to Entity Framework. There is the system.data namespace, which is where Entity Framework used to be located within the .NET Framework, but it doesn't have any of the Entity namespaces or objects. But otherwise, console application is fairly lightweight, just includes a few references to various namespaces that you're likely to use in most applications. So this hypothetical project is going to use Entity Framework. So I need to open up the NuGet Package Console. So I'll come up here to Tools and NuGet Package Manager and click on that right there. So as you briefly saw there within the window, this is actually a PowerShell host that is hosted within Visual Studio. But what it really is is a command prompt type of window where you can install packages, remove them, maintain them, update them, and so forth. Perform various kinds of operations on the packages within this project. Now, by the way, there's a couple other options in here. And in particular, you can use this Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, as well as a couple of the other options, in order to have nice GUI interfaces to perform these operations. But most developers seem to prefer the speed and really the simplicity of the package console. So that's what I'm going to use here. So what I need to do is execute a command at this PM command prompt. And I'm going to type in install dash. And I'll type the tab key. And it'll take a second or two. And that'll bring up a list of the possible options here. And if I continue to type or use the up and down arrows, I can select Install Package, so you can see that there's a form of IntelliSense there. And I hit the Tab key again, and that completes that command. And then what I need to install is the Entity Framework. And I'll type Entity and hit Tab again. And as you can see, there's various potential packages that I can include. So I want Entity Framework, so I just hit the down arrow down to that, and hit Tab, and press Enter. And what it'll do now is it'll go out go to the NuGet server where that package is installed. As you can see in the lower left, it's downloading the package. And then it goes ahead and installs it. I'll go ahead and make the window a little bit bigger so that you can see everything that happened there. So there's my original command. I'm installing Entity Framework. So you can see that the, the latest version as of when I am doing this right now is 6.1.1. And then it has some information. You're downloading it from Microsoft, license, license agreement, blah, blah, blah. And then successfully installed it. It's adding Entity Framework 6.1.1 to install EF, which is the project name. And then happily says that it successfully added the Entity Framework package to the project. Now, if there's any problems downloading it, or you typed in the wrong name for a package, or, or whatever, there'll be some fairly informative messages to tell you exactly what went wrong. OK, so the package is installed. If I come back over here to Solution Explorer, you can see that it added two references, one to Entity Framework and one to Entity Framework.SQL Server. And this is some specific features for Entity Objects when they're used against a SQL Server database. So that's it. The project now has the latest version of Entity Framework ready and available for use. And it's also available to other projects. It's installed in this machine, although I'll still need to take this step for applications that don't have Entity Framework as part of the project template. And that's something that is changing a fair amount. So the best practice to do is anytime you start a brand new project, go ahead and grab the latest version of Entity Framework, and then you know in that project you have the latest version. And if you're working on a project for a while, Microsoft releases a new version of Entity Framework, then you can use the Update Package feature within this Package Manager console in order to update to the latest version as well. All right, so hopefully up to this point, I've thoroughly convinced you of why you should use an ORM for any non-trivial data application. But should you use Entity Framework or one of the many other available ORMs that are usable with .NET? Well, there's some benefits of why you should use Entity Framework specifically. It's part of the .NET Framework and integrated into Visual Studio. This means that it's easy to use and integrate within your applications. It also means that it gets wide use, guaranteeing timely bug fixes and innovations 
as really is evidenced by the rich feature additions included in just about every new version. And you really can't beat the price, it's free. Although there's certainly other good free ones out there as well. It uses pure Link as its primary query language. Link is built into C Sharp, as well as Visual Basic, as a native part of the syntax, letting you write queries directly in the programming language against the entity objects. The code you write has the benefit of IntelliSense, strong typing, and compile time checking. This is far better than including strings of SQL or other query language within your code that cause context shifts between different languages. Even if you use stored procedures within your code, you're working far too intimately with the details of the database. Entity Framework and Link remove all those kinds of database details from your main application code. It's independent of the data store that you use to persist data. Entity Framework manages all of the interactions with the data store, and as long as there's a provider for your chosen store, you can use Entity Framework to access the data and use Entity Objects in your application. Entity Framework takes care of all the details of data flows and conversions, so your application doesn't have to include any code at all for those kinds of purposes. But if you need to more closely manage interactions with the data store, the Entity Framework APIs give you that ability. And then probably most importantly, Microsoft has made a firm commitment to make Entity Framework its data access strategy for the foreseeable future. And I certainly don't know any replacements that are in the pipe. There could be something internal to Microsoft, but they're still going strong on Entity Framework. And Microsoft, as I mentioned, recommends that you use Entity Framework instead of the generic ADO.NET data objects. The company has invested heavily in the technology, and all indications are that it's going to continue to do so. But times change, as technologies do. But right now, Entity Framework is easily the safest technology bet for new applications, today, right now. If you've used earlier versions of Entity Framework, you'll be glad to know that starting with version 4, several releases ago, then that was its second version. Microsoft solves a lot of the problems with the initial version 1.0 release, which was actually version 3.5 under its numbering scheme. That first release had received a resounding thumbs down from the .NET ORM community. So Entity Framework has gotten better, and every new version adds new features and many refinements that make Entity Framework even more usable and useful for data applications today, modern enterprise data applications. But I definitely don't want to give the impression that Entity Framework is a complete panacea. It's just not. Nor is it appropriate for every kind of application. Just because it's shiny and hip doesn't mean that you shouldn't carefully think about how and whether to fit it into the architecture of an application. Like any ORM, Entity Framework takes time to learn and integrate into your way of development. So it's not an instant data access panacea. If you have a project that's overdue and is a data access nightmare, Entity Framework will almost certainly just make things worse as you try to integrate it late in the development cycle. Get that project done and then take the time to learn Entity Framework and integrate it into the next version of your application, as well as all new applications. An ORM, like Entity Framework, isn't appropriate for every kind of application. If the application doesn't work with data in meaningful ways, or simply displays a little bit of data to the user without further interaction with the database, Entity Framework is probably gross overkill. But if the application uses data extensively and let users update and save data changes, Entity Framework might be a good fit. And then finally, Entity Framework doesn't real easily do bulk inserts, so it's usually better to use the database's support for this kind of large, fast data imports instead, or even use some of the native ADO.NET features for the task. But this has kind of been moderated somewhat because more recent versions of Entity Framework have made big improvements in this area, so it might be worthwhile exploring it for your particular use case. But either way, it's still a little bit on the awkward side.